From the previous six videos, we understood how to use form builder class to create form group and form array objects. If you are not familiar with form builder class and its functions, then I would highly recommend to watch the previous six videos before viewing this video. In this video, I am going to demonstrate applying form builder in all the four reactive form examples that we have implemented so far in this course. This is the first example we implemented on reactive form that captures signup details of a new user. For this signup form, this is the form group definition in the component class. I will now convert this form group definition to use form builder in app.component.ts. I am including the constructor before the ng on init function. As parameter of the constructor, I am including a private parameter with a name as fb having data type as form builder. When including the form builder class, I am getting the class automatically imported by selecting the class from the drop down. We can see that form builder is now automatically imported from at angular slash forms folder. After the parameter definition for the constructor, I am including open and close curly braces as there is no specific implementation required in the constructor. I am selecting the constructor line and copying it so that I can paste it when working on other examples without having the necessity to retype the code. In the line where the form group is defined, I am removing new form group and replacing it with this dot fb dot group. In the next line, I am removing new form control then I am changing the opening normal bracket to square bracket. Subsequently, I am changing the closing bracket as closing square bracket. The change to square brackets help to define the form control value and its validation in an array. Now I am going to repeat whatever change done in the first form control to the other form controls. I am removing new form control then changing the following normal brackets to square brackets. For the last item, it does not have validators. Hence, it is sufficient to remove new form control, then to remove the brackets and leaving it to have only the false value. Now we have completed the changes required to use form builder class. I am saving the file. After the page reload, I am going to test if the form works after these changes. I am entering data into each one of the form field. We can see that the form data is reflected below, which means that we have successfully converted the code to use form builder class. I'm going to start working on the next example. If you want to try these changes in your reactive form example, then you can pause the video here to complete the changes. In the next example, we worked on a nested form. In app.component.ts, the contact details are defined in a separate inner form group. We will now convert this entire form group definition to use form builder. I am pasting the constructor for injecting the form builder class. Then by hovering over form builder class and selecting quick fix option to import the class. To do the conversion, I am removing the new form group and changing it to this.fb.group, then doing similar conversion for the inner form group. Then I am removing all new form control and its brackets. I am repeating this for name, mobile, email and home.
with these changes the conversion to use form builder is completed i am saving the file after the page reload i am entering data into the form fields to check if it is working as expected we can see the data reflected in the bottom which means that we have successfully completed the conversion pause the video here if you want to try this conversion in your desktop now i will demonstrate the form builder conversion in the hobbies example this is the section of code in app.component.ts that defines the form group object i am pasting the constructor and then importing form builder i am changing new form group to this.fb.group in the next line i am removing new form control and removing the brackets in the following line i am removing new form array and replacing it with this.fb.array in the subsequent three lines i am removing new form control and replacing the following brackets into square brackets necessary changes are now completed i am saving the file after the page reload i am typing data in the form fields and we can see the data reflected in the bottom pause the video here if you want to try these changes in the hobbies example now i will demonstrate the changes in quiz example this is the section of code in app.component.ts that defines the form group object i am pasting the constructor and importing form builder class then in the form group creation line i am removing new form group and replacing it as this.fb.group in the next line removing new form control and its brackets in the following line removing new form array and replacing it with this.fb.array we are dynamically creating form group object in create answer group function we will make necessary changes here as well removing new form group and changing it as this.fb.group in the next line removing new form control and then converting the brackets to square brackets in the next line removing new form control and its brackets necessary changes are now completed i am saving the file after the page reload i am typing data in the form fields and we can see the data reflected in the bottom pause the video here if you want to try these changes hope this video helps you understand how to apply form builder in various scenarios with this video i am concluding the coverage of topics on reactive form as this is a beginner level course some topics are not covered as part of this course from the angular documentation let me highlight the topics that are not covered in this course as part of reactive form in the angular documentation i am opening developer guides then form and then validate form input this section contains details about implementing validations on template driven form and reactive form the subtopic defining custom validator is not covered in this course it contains details about creating our own validators another subtopic cross field validation is not covered in this course it contains details about creating validators that involve validation from multiple fields of your form the next subtopic that is not covered is about creation of asynchronous validators if your validation is dependent on backend data then it has to be done by making a backend call asynchronous validator helps to manage the delay in validation as it involves network latency due to backend call to completely master reactive forms these are the three additional topics that needs to be learned 
Hope these series of videos on reactive form helps you get started to work with reactive forms. From the next video onwards, we will start learning a new topic in Angular.